What's up, Tutorinos? Welcome back to another episode of the Game Addicts Podcast, the show where we talk about the modern and retro video games that we play and collect. I am your podcast player, one Brando, and today, well, it's a bit of a bittersweet episode because we've already recorded this episode once. Now, if any of you guys have been listening to us for any amount of time, you'll know that there was an episode way back, what, like last year for like Thanksgiving, where uh, Mike and I, we we pre-recorded an episode for that holiday, you know, we did it during our extra live stream. And that entire episode, it was like weird. Our voices were weird, they were like really low and an octave and everything. And it was pretty much unusable because the the audio keeps clipping, right? And man, it is so frustrating. Uh when that happens, well so like all right, whatever. We'll power through, we'll we'll meet together. And the night before Thanksgiving, which is on Thursday, that's our normal launch day, right? So we're going to get together and we're going to record. And, it, you know, instead of it just being us chilling out, and, and I think what we did at the time, review bombing was big in the news. You know, review bombing, Fallout, review bombing, whatever. Review bombing, like like actual good games, like like Red Dead Redemption was getting, uh, 2 was getting review bombed. So we, re so we review bombed some of the really negative reviews on some of the highest rated games of all time. It was a fun episode. You know, we had a lot of fun with it. But it's completely unusable, you know. It's on, I believe it is on the YouTube channel. Uh, one of these days I may, I mean, it's, it, no, no. One of these days I won't release it because it because it's awful. We'll, we'll just redo that concept later on. So, what's going on? Well, it's something to do with how the interface that I have, well, and it works as another interface too because our friends over at Podcastrophy have dealt with this too. It, it even does it during the middle of a broadcast or like or a recording or, or, or capturing, whichever, however you want to put it. It'll change the octave of your voice. It's how, however, the interface communicates with Windows 10, and I fixed it once, and it didn't do it for a long time. Uh, so that episode, you know, we did the episode for Extra Life, and, and that was how we started that stream was with the podcast. And okay, so this episode's unusable. So then we, re so then we recorded an episode for Thanksgiving, where I pretty much reviewed Red Dead Redemption Two, and it did it then too. So then I had to get up early, Thanksgiving, listen to the episode. I believe the episode is called Pod Cursed. It's one of my worst episodes I've ever done because I'm sitting here in this game room at 8 o'clock in the morning, so frustrated with this crap, having to record something because I want to put something out for you guys. Now, I obviously couldn't, you know, I didn't have to. You know, we miss weeks every once in a while, and it happens. You know, life happens. No one's going to cry and complain to us because we missed a week. But I, I'm, I was determined at this point. I'm, I'm going to make this happen. It did it during the middle of that, but the audio didn't clip. I was using a different program to, to you know, to record. I was using Audacity instead of Streamlabs. I was just doing audio. I was at that point. I'm like, screw video. I don't care. I don't have my face on. And it did it, but I was able to fix it because I can change the the pitch, you know, the octave of the, like of the voice. I was able to find the right setting and fix it, and everything was fine for that episode. Well, we recorded this episode for 134, and it did it again. I even did a test, and the test sounds perfect, like where I just hit record. How, how do we sound? Do we sound okay? Okay, cool. Let's go live, and let's you know let let you know let's stream live to the masses, and let's record the episode. And I went back to I, I was uploading the episode to YouTube and whatever, and I went to go edit the audio for the podcast, and I heard it. I'm like, no. Because I sound like that, but he doesn't because I'm capturing his call from, you know, uh, from Discord. So what I'll do, I'll just show you guys. I'll, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, now, I'm using a different microphone. I'm using my old Samson condenser mic, which picks up a mouse fart. 
So I do apologize if you hear a little bit of a more of a sensitive mic, hear mouse clicking, hear me moving the mic like that, hear my kid yelling in the background because he's not getting his way, hearing a cat meowing at the door because cats want in this room so bad because this is like the only room that they're not allowed to be in. Uh, so I'm just going to show you for, you know, for a fact, it's like a 40 second clip. We were talking about our awesome cups that we had made and you'll hear my voice and you hear his voice and you hear him talking more than me. I probably could have picked a better clip because, but I'm just like, Oh, Hey, look, we're talking about our cups and I really want to showcase these cups. So ch yeah, check this out guys. You know, we never actually officially have showed off. I know. I our, know. Like our cups. Mike was so gracious and had these cups made for us. And By a wonderful wor girl that we work with. Yeah. I believe that her thing is Cardinal Delights. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you guys um, are into uh, custom, I mean, she makes tons of different sizes. Yes, it's custom tons. cups, tumblers. She makes Tumbl it's basically tumblers. Yes, and but she does other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She uh, she's done mugs. She's got like the little skinny ones. Um, my wife wants she the also, skinny ones. She also does some woodworking and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. The very lightly, very, very, but not very much. But the tumblers, yeah, and uh, she does um, local shows. Mm -hmm. uh, next next couple months for her are pretty packed. And yeah. Yeah. All right. So you heard it, right? You heard my voice. I'm, I'm like way down here. And uh, and you can hear the little clips and you hear our bits of audio. Just It sounds awful, man. I don't know what to do because it did it to me, uh, like I think a few months ago, back in April or something, where it did it to me. And check this crap out. The actual day that we recorded that episode, you know, I've been doing a, a video game content. For our YouTube channel, I've been playing through Mass Effect, one of my favorite games of all time, one of my favorite series of all time. And I got to an episode where I was going to play through the Bring Down to Sky DLC, and I did my, uh, I jumped right into it, and I and I just, I, I didn't do my check, man. I didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't think about it. I was early in the morning. I'm like, let me squeeze this in. Let me get this out so I can get this recorded. And it did it. I lost the entire episode because then I saved right after, and I can't go back and replay that. Thankfully. Thankfully, it's just the DLC that has no bearing on the plot whatsoever. The only thing is that there's a little bit in that that carries over into the game later on, like the Mass Effect 3 or something. You get a little cameo because of that. And I lost that entire gameplay thing. All of it. An hour and a half or whatever. How, however long it took me. I beat that thing and I lost the whole dang thing. It's so frustrating. Thankfully, it hasn't done it. Well, anyway, I have quit using the interface until I can figure this out. I'm using the Samson. It is what it is. You guys are going to have to put up with some extra sound. I've tried to turn down the volume on the microphone. I have to hold it. I'm holding it with a stand because I can't find the connector for my arm. Pod cursed part two. Yeah, no. Uh, guys, this week I'm actually going to – there is a lot of news that has come out from Gamescom that's really cool to talk about. Me and Mike are going to talk about that next week. Yeah, that's going to be next week, guys, that me and Mike are going to talk about, like, all the, like the weird Death Stranding peeing stuff and, you know, the cool Dragon Ball Z uh, the video. Uh, the Avengers gameplay was awesome. But we're going to talk about all that next week. This week, it's the final part, the final chapter of the Gaming Pickups Revisited. Uh, basically, what I've been doing, if you have, if you, this is your first time, uh, I used to do pickup videos for my old podcast, Journey to Comics, uh, then which well, they, 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 that's where this podcast spawned from because we were on their YouTube channel on there uh, it, it was exclusive what we did is that we had the Journey into Comics podcast and we were starting to branch out because we wanted to encompass other topics I wanted to do a video game podcast he wanted to do a movie podcast and, and so we were like okay let's let's house that on the YouTube channel but before that I was doing pickup videos because I was growing my gaming collection and I wanted a an outlet for my, uh, you know, for my video games. And because, uh, you know, the YouTube channel was, we didn't really have anything there. I'm like, you know what? Let's use that. I'll do content for that. And uh, now that uh, I'm not a big part of the Journey to Comics group anymore, um, I do do, a, I, I now am doing a new show uh, with, uh, with one of the co-founders, Nate. Uh, but... I, I'm not like a key member. I'm not involved in the inner circle. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just helping out. I'm helping out, uh, you know, some friends. And uh, 
But uh, I wanted to get that stuff and those pickup videos over onto this channel because that's what started this podcast, essentially. Because I was doing those pickups. I was talking about games. I was talking about why I bought Game A. I was talking about, you know, hey, guys, I bought Mass Effect, even though I already own it. But, I mean, you know, this basically, I would sit here and I'd hold the game and I'd tell you why I bought it. I'd tell you a little bit about it if I knew anything. Maybe I'd BS my way through. I don't know. But I'd tell you why I bought it, why I added it to my collection. And we actually started doing, eventually, uh, I quit doing the videos and I, we just started incorporating that into the podcast itself or like one of the earliest segments that we would do in the show is pickups. Have you bought anything? Have, have we added anything to the collection? And while Mike and I have both slowed down immensely with growing our gaming collection, uh, you know, first it was these pickup videos. And if you look in the back catalog, if you go all the way back into the archives, you'll see uh, episodes called gaming pickups revisited and that's exactly what these are it's me sitting here if i'm trying to fill a week if we don't have a you know a show to produce let me put these out let me get these out this is extra content this is an episode for you guys because you guys while we would do segments of oh i bought this game in this game this is like a full episode of getting to know my collection before this podcast started if i'd have had this podcast back then i never would have made these videos but i didn't so i made these videos they're here you guys get to see what game by game how I grew my collection. What's all in my collection? Some of them I don't actually have anymore. <laughs> I sold some stuff, but it's pre still pretty cool to kind of go back and you uh, and I have a lot of. I still have most of them. However, I'm gonna play that right now. I only have two videos left in the entire series. This is the last episode of these. It's, it's it. And the last episode had Mike on it. Had you know he came over and he had he showed me some of his pickups and we filmed it. We stood right here, and you see the camera's like way back there. It's like right there on the bookshelf, and we're standing right here, facing it, and we just you know show it up. You know, so the first video, I do believe is, and I, how I would do it, I would like wait like a while or a month. At one point, I was buying games, a lot of games every month, and then I started slowing down and I started waiting until I had about thirty to show to fill up like a 20 minute video and then I put it out. So the first one is winter spring 2016. And what this is, is this is all the games that I bought pretty much from January or like after Christmas era. And like until like March, I think March is when I filmed the video. I put it out in April and then the second video is spring summer. So the first one here that you guys are going to see is winter spring 2016. And, uh, yeah, I'll let myself take it away. What's up, everybody? Brando back here again with Brandon's Game Room right here on the, on the Journey into Comics YouTube channel. And i uh, got another pickup video here. Quite a few. I think it's about 61 or so or something like that. Basically, you're, you're going to be seeing the same kind of video that I did uh, for the last one because I don't have my tripod right now. And I looked all around for it. can't set it up. The older way I did it, when I didn't have my tripod, I... I used my shelf. Well, I've rearranged the game room, so we're gonna do this uh, with, with you know, kind of like with the table style, kind of like the uh, the Adam Krolik style. But you know what? It'll get the job done, and you'll get to see close up look at these games. First up here, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Um, finally have this. I definitely overpaid for it. I paid pretty much asking price because uh, I never come across it, and it was one of those that I'm just trying to finish up my N64 collection with where. I kind of wanted it to be at, and that was one of the ones I needed. So I went ahead and picked that up. Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced 2. Um, again, uh, with this, I uh, kind of just found this. Uh, don't really come. I have the first Advanced, the Tactics of Advanced, so it's really cool to pick this up, get that into the collection. But coming down here, PS3, uh, Deadly Premonition Director's Cut. Really cool, weird title. Uh, it's one of those, it's like, it's almost like a throwback to some of those weird old, kind of bad, um, like survival horror games. But it's so bad it's good, kind of thing. And uh, has move support and everything. Uh, I've never even tried the move. But uh, definitely glad to pick that up. And then one of the launch titles, I do believe, for PS3, if not close to it, uh, Lair. And that, that game right here was like under a buck. It was like 79 cents. So, yeah, I just picked it up to kind of expand the PS3 collection and kind of have some of the launch titles. Coming down here, original Xbox, Red Dead Revolver. It, you know, it's a pretty fun game. I played this back in the day on the PS2. Right now I have Red Dead Redemption. I ended up getting the 360 version. Uh, 
after getting the PS3 version originally, but I got the 360 version from a friend and it had Undead Nightmare on there and on, on the disc. So it's not DLC, which is always good. So, you know, I'm just keeping it in the family for the Xbox and I got Red Dead Revolver for the Xbox for a couple bucks. Not bad. Um, uh, coming over here to the 360, um, uh, Ended up picking up Eternal Sonata, really neat, uh, quirky little Japanese game here. I like getting this stuff for the 360. I think that also came to the PS3 as well. But it, you don't see too uh, too much of that quirky Japanese stuff on the uh, 360. Coming down here, we have the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I can't get the camera to focus, but anyway, cool. Side score, beat them up. Uh, then we have some Game Boy games, Royal Land 3, Donkey Kong Land 2, Final Fantasy Adventures. Uh, Adventure, my bad, uh, looking at it through the viewfinder, and Mega Man 2, uh, really good games here. Mega Man 2 is actually a little bit, like, damaged, or, uh, color damaged. It's not really, you can't really pick it up too much on camera, but to the eye, it definitely looks a bit darker. I actually cleaned it up a bit, and I'm, I'm not really too sure why that is, if that's sun damage or what, but coming over here, a couple of advanced games, Golden Sun, Fire Emblem, Advanced Wars 2, and a DS copy of FF3. Pretty much, I found that for pretty cheap, and I have DS cases, and for some of my games, I do just print labels off, just to let them, make them look good on the shelf, but my printer's down, so I uh, can't print anything, so that kind of sucks. Coming down here, uh, Zone of the Enders 2, a second runner, uh, awesome series, it's a shame that it didn't get more love, um, but glad they picked that up and that added to it. Another PS2, uh, Eco, uh, a game I didn't play back in the day, but heard a lot about, so... Glad to also have that in there, and you know, uh, when you're kind of collecting for like some of these systems that you kind of want to choose to collect for, uh, well, it, there, there are certain titles you definitely want to kind of pick up along the way, certain ones that were sort of iconic for that system. And if there's, if there's any game uh, other than like um, Ratchet and Clank, or uh, what's the other one I'm thinking of, uh, Jack and Daxter, God of War, that is iconic for the PS2. It would be Eco and its uh, sister sequel, uh, Sh uh, Shadow of Colossus. Now the sun's coming out to play as I'm shooting this video, but come on, man. I'm all here, PS2, Dragon Guard, fun title, Square Enix, kind of a beat em up. Um, over here, Klonoa 2. I don't have Klonoa 1 on, on physical copy, I have it digitally. That's because it is so freaking hard to come by. I've seen one copy and it didn't have the original case and they wanted 70 bucks for it. So, pass that up, but I got that. So. Happy to have that. Coming down here, um, Mega Salt 2, Lone Wolf. Uh, got the cool little lim like limited edition foil uh, look to it. Is it foil? I thought it was. Yep, foil. Hard, it was hard to tell with the light be uh, beating on it like that. But Coming down here, uh, Harry Potter, Sorcerer's Stone. Uh, no real attachment to that game other than the fact that I just happen to have Chamber of Secrets, so finish the set. WWF Warzone. The thing with this is that I actually do think this game is a big pile of crap, but it was my first ever PS1 game. So I no longer had it. In fact, uh, when I got my N64, I came with like a bundle of games, and then Warzone was one of them. So I'm like, eh, all right, I don't need to rebuy it. But found it for a couple bucks. And so I just kind of decided, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and pick it back up and uh, just have it for. You know, for collector's sake, I don't really care if it's the greatest hits or black label, but, you know, now I have the original PS1 game that started off my collection. Twisted Metal 3, uh, well, that sort of cl completes my set. I got 1, 2, and, and 4, so now I got 3. 1 and 2 are definitely the better ones. Uh, 3 started, like, the downtrend, and 4 was just absolutely horrible, in my opinion, but... Gex 3, great game here. I love all the Gex games. Uh, really wish... He would make some sort of a retro comeback in unlike the newer systems. He was definitely interesting, and especially with TV sort of dying off, I think it'd be really funny to see him kind of fight for like the TV, uh, keep you know keeping the TV alive. But last PS1 game here, uh, Hot Shots Golf, good game here. Uh, I have Hot Shots Golf too, so I had to get the first one right. And that, I remember playing the demo for Hot Shots Golf. That was really good. But coming all the way back up here, uh, I got Sleeping Dogs. For the PS4, Definitive Edition, and Rise of the Tomb Raider for Xbox One. Now, I got Sleeping Dogs for free through PS1, or PS Plus, my bad. I got it free through PS Plus. Uh, I always wanted to try it, and then I ended up getting it for free, and it was probably one of the best free games I got out of that program. I fell in love with that game. It's not quite GTA V or anything like that, but you know what? It's damn fun. 
and it kind of reminds me of like you know definitely what the uh, true crime series could have been and of course this is Sleeping Dogs is so it's supposed to be true crime 3 but it definitely got a, an overhaul of look and, and like a name change any of titles here that I had to cross out uh, Sun coming into play here Contra Castlevania with the uh, a little bit of a torn corner too bad in Battletoads so NES collection coming along a couple of really key titles there Coming down here, a Star Ocean, Second Evolution. It's a little beat up as well. The label is kind of got some damage in there, but hey, adds character, right? Tactics Ogre, Patapon, uh, good pickups here. The PSP, the PSP is definitely one of my uh, favorite systems to collect for. There's just so many great titles for that, so many different titles. And it's really a shame because I really don't feel like they sold that many games on it, but they definitely had a lot of... Uh, a lot of systems sold, so they were putting more games on there than what it was really selling. But coming down here, I got the Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings Enhanced Edition Silver Box. A pretty cool price on this. I got this pretty for a really good price. And uh, you know, I've been wanting to check out the Witcher 3, but I'm like, I want to play the Witcher 2 because that one's the only other one on console. So I got it for uh, for a pretty good price and picked that up. I did try it out, and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting into that and playing both of those games. GameCube. I uh, really kind of slacked off on getting GameCube stuff. I don't, I'm not seeing a whole lot here lately, so when I see something that I want, yeah, I definitely snag it up. And this was only like two bucks or something like that. It was crazy. But uh, it was a bite. Uh, I'm, I'm going to botch this really bad. Baton Kaitos. Baton Kaitos. Whatever, however you pronounce that. Pretty cool, weird. I think it's like a card playing RPG, if I remember correctly, when I tried it out. But never played it back in the day. But uh, I'm always on the lookout for some uh, for some pretty cool titles, and especially stuff that only came out for GameCube. And we have Dynasty Gundam 3. So this completes the set that I have, and of course I got it for the 360. Um, again, like I said before with the Eternal Sonata, the only reason I did was because it's really neat to get these weird, quirky Japanese titles for the, the, for the, like, the American system, essentially, you know? So definitely pick those up, and you know... A lot of times, you know, it's definitely said that the, that the third-party games played better on the PS... I mean, I'm sorry, they, they played better on the Xbox than they did the PS3. And for the most part, you're right. But as the PS3 development went longer and the system went longer, people started figuring that system out, and it gets harder and harder to tell. You have to put them side-by-side side and play them side-by-side side to really get a, a, a good look at what what version of it's better, you know? So it's like, for example, like GTA 5, it is so hard to tell. So really what I do is that I just kind of a pick a version and go for that, and then I get all the games for that the best I can. So like, for example, I've got another series coming up that I, that I decided to buy on the PS3, but uh, I could have got them on the 360, but I just decided to go for PS3 simply because... I'm trying to make the collections a little bit even, you know, I'm I'm not trying to get all, I'm not focusing 100% on PS3, and I'm not focusing 100% on Xbox, I'm kind of spreading the love out between the two systems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the table and start all over again, because I got more games. So I will see you soon, you're going to get a jump cut probably. And I am back with a full table again, uh, starting off with Dead Space series, like I ended up getting all three of them on the PS3. As I said, I just sort of just started uh, with, I got Dead Space 1, kind of decided I was just going to get it for the PS3, and uh, ended up getting them all for, uh, you know, it was, a, it was an okay price, let's put it that way. They were actually cheaper on the, on the 360, as I found out, as I started looking for them, which, it's kind of a bummer, but, uh, you know, I kind of chose my battle and said, you know, PS3 is where Dead Space is going to be for me. Over here also, I got Battlefield Bad Company, Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3. All three of these games for me were like nine or ten bucks. Seriously, I think Battlefield Three was like two fifty, and I think the most expensive one was uh, the original uh, Bad Company, which was like four something. But yeah, you know, same thing. I like I just had to see the price, and I think I found Battlefield Three first, which is the only one that I've actually put time into and played. But I decided that's where that's that title and that series was going to be. So that's kind of where I went with. A couple more PS3 before I move on. Catherine. Finally got me Catherine. Uh, really neat puzzle game. 
Uh, definitely a little provocative, uh, but a, a really cool game, and it sets itself apart from the rest of these action shooter stuff that was really popular for the PS3 and 360. Um, speaking of shooters, uh, Resistance Fall Man, and then Rage. Uh, of course, Resistance is a PS3 exclusive, and Rage is developed by the guys that made like Wolfenstein and stuff like that. But essentially, these games are like two bucks a piece, so couldn't say no to that. Couldn't couldn't say no at all. Coming on, coming over here to some PS1 stuff. Let me reposition. PS1 stuff. Uh, Grand Theft Auto double pack with uh, it's the director's cut with the London pack. Now, interesting enough, I already have GTA One. I needed London, so I bought London and took it home, and it was the original disc. It was GTA 1, and I took it back, and that, they just happened to buy it wrong, and so they gave me back my money, and the guy that helped me out both times ended up seeing this come in, and remembered that I was looking for it, set it aside just for me, just in case I wanted it, because apparently that's how often I go into that store. He even knew me by name, so my local disc replay knows who I am, and I'm almost... Uh, not quite maybe a local celebrity, but good enough for, for, for them to recognize my face. I'm in there enough. Uh, Resident Evil Director's Cut with the Resident Evil 2 demo. I already have uh, the, bug, the big box copy original of Resident Evil, and I have the greatest hits of the Director's Cut, but I saw this for a few bucks and said, uh, yep, got to get it. And really, I'm just a diehard Resident Evil fan, especially the old school titles, 1 and 2, especially. 3 is good too, uh, but... Man, that first one is so lovably bad. I love it, and it's bad, and that's why it's good. 007 Tomorrow Never Dies. I owned this game back when I was a kid. It's not a great game, but I owned it, so I had to pick it up. And WCW Nitro. Uh, pretty horrific wrestling game, too. Man, it's, a, it's it was almost like the wrestling games were just terrible. Uh, besides the one on like the uh, on the ones on the N64 made by AKI. The WCW and WWF games, but then the SmackDown series eventually did get good. Um, coming over here, we got some Xbox Love, got Cold Fear, and I got Forza Motorsport. Really, I've been focusing more on like exclusives for the original Xbox, but the original Xbox collecting is freaking cheap right now. So if you have any desire to get original Xbox games, now is the time because they have some rare games on my disc replay, and I'm talking like. You know, stuff like the Guy game, and, uh, oh, what was the other one I saw? It was uh, the Dark Alliance 2, um, the Fatal Frame 2, and, and really, they're just, they're like 20 bucks, for, and, and that's, for the, that's for your more rare, uncommon titles, so that's unbelievable. Um, over here, I got Far Cry Instincts, which was the console version of the original Far Cry, and then I got Far Cry 2 for the 360, so uh, good to get those bundles. I'm really looking to get into the Far Cries and try them out. Um, I liked a lot what I played of Far Cry Instincts, and I really didn't get to play too much of 2, but it does work, so that's enough for me for right now. Back on the Xbox, I got Morrowind, Elder Scrolls 3. Uh, got the Game of the Year edition, and got a good price on it. So, you know, that one's running at that store kind of like at around like 15 bucks, and I ended up getting it for 12 So good deal on that. Um, Outrun 2, of course it's made by Sega. The, it's sort of a consoleized version of the old Outrun arcade, and I think that I'm, I'm not sure if this one had an arcade release or not, but um, fun, man, really fun. Brings back memories of playing those old old arcade games. I used to play Outrun, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was the one on, on the motorcycle that Sega made. I, I can't remember that. I know you can play it in, in Shenmue, and, that, and when I found that out, I spend like all my time playing that damn game. But Half-Life 2, uh, Half-Life 3, not confirmed, but Half-Life 2 got that on the Xbox. I'm going to have to pick up the original Half-Life now, because I just happened to see this for like a couple bucks, and I picked it up. Blinks! You know, I heard not much about Blinks. I've heard it was kind of a failed concept for a mascot, and you know what? It's pretty freaking fun. I, I did have some fun playing it when I was testing it out. And then, Bioshock. Uh, the Bioshock series has come to rest for me on the 360, and this one is just a little beat up. Some cuts in the plastic, but... Finally tracked down the original Bioshock, so now I got the complete set on the 360. Now, the last one over here is not a game, but it is the Collector's Edition Legend of Zelda The Complete Season. The cartoon from the old 80s uh, cartoon. So, yeah, uh, pretty cool they picked this up. I got it for 4 bucks, brand new. And that's pretty much the rest of this table. I have two more games to show you, and they're on the PSP. 
but there are collector's editions and I'm going to be setting that up separately, taking all the stuff out to kind of show you what I got and tell you about that story. So, um, yeah, second table done. All right, here last ones. And I got the premium editions of two of the ease games, ease chronicles or ease one and two chronicles, E seven and everything that was in them. Now I got both of these for 30 bucks and I see them go for a lot higher than that. The condition of these is pretty damn good. Um, for Ease 1 and 2, it, you know, it comes with a box. It's kind of like a holographic box. It's got like a, the image of, the, the images on the side actually form together. Uh, and so there's actually one that I'm missing, Ease, Oath, and Felgana that I need to get. Condition is pretty damn good. This is still sealed, as you can see, for the soundtrack. And then for over here... Uh, E7, sort of the same thing. Uh, the, this box is a little bit more beat up uh, than the other one, but um, over here I got the soundtrack, still sealed. Map still sealed. I got the art book. It's still, you know, still looking pretty good. Now the game was also sealed, but I, I did open it pretty much just to say that I did because I believe games should be played, and there's not too many games that I would ever, ever buy. And keep them sealed. Like, if I get a good, really good deal on like a Chrono Trigger, FF7, FF6, or 3, um, maybe, maybe I would keep it as a keepsake. But if I'm going to track down something kind of like a uh, like a Stadium Events or a little Samson, uh, dude, I'm flipping that and buying more games. I, have, I don't have the nostalgia for that stuff. So definitely really cool thing to pick up here. How I got these is I actually went with uh, my friend Mike. He's appeared on the podcast before. He wanted to get a PSP, and they happened to have a the Emerald Green uh, Metal Gear Solid PSP that came bundled in with a, with a copy of Peace Walker. And, you know, he, he decided to pick it up, and we were walking over to get him some games, notably like Crisis Core or Dissidia or Final Fantasy Tactics or something like that. And the guy behind the counter says, Hey, uh, these came with the system. I got these in here. I haven't put them out yet. And on the bottom, uh, they I think they had the two uh, these two star oceans, like, like a tails game, and then uh, yeah, they had these two ease games on the very bottom. And he kind of teased me and acted like he was gonna buy them, and I'm like, dude, shut up! You don't even know how to pronounce it. <laughs> so back off, man, back off. Uh, really lucky that I got these in the condition that they're in. Uh, once I found out about the uh, about the pictures kind of going together. Uh, I found out that they kind of, the East, both and Felgana kind of goes in between them. So I got to pick that up now and complete that set. But yeah, uh, Ease, man. Uh, series I didn't even know about before I started collecting. And now I'm really digging it, man. So uh, that's all the games I bought the last few months. And we're back. Yeah, the videos end a little bit abruptly because I'm cutting out. Uh, the outros, essentially where I just go, uh, ramble on and then plug stuff. You guys don't need to hear me sitting there plugging stuff. So, uh, yeah, that was that video. Those, those were those games. Man, those I, I still have those Ease games. I'm so glad I still have those. Uh, I, and spoiler alert, I did track down that third one. And uh, I've, I've shared that story in the podcast, and I don't know if that's in the next pickup video. If it isn't. Uh, maybe I'll I, I'll definitely talk about that. But first and foremost, I want to thank each and every one of you who listen to our podcast. Each and every one of you. There's like 1,500 of you that that follow us on 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 the Podbean app alone. Not to mention the people who listen on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio now. You know, this podcast has grown so much. And I mean, I mean, we're still small guys. We're still we're just two Midwest gamers that just sit down. And talk about gaming and hit that record button. We're no different from each and every one of you. But I want to thank each and every one of you guys for listening. Because that means so much. So much to me. Because I put so much of um, my heart and vision into this show. And I thoroughly enjoy podcasting. I, th I thoroughly enjoy... You know... Uh, not only do I get to you know do like a radio thing... But I get to do whatever about my passion about video games. There's an outlet for it. You have no idea how excited I was like six years ago to discover the world of podcasts. Because it 
it really awakened that in me. I always wanted to do some sort of radio, but now I can do it and the, you know, the world is my oyster. I can do a podcast about anything that I want and why not do a podcast about the one thing that I, you know, is a central piece in my life more than anything. And that's gaming, you know? So thanks to each and every one of you who listen on any of the platforms. Also, thank you to, to all the guys who watch on the live streams. We're starting to grow that. And, and, and to the guys that subscribe to us on YouTube, we're starting to grow that as well. You know, I'm trying to put more gaming content. I'm trying to do more than just the podcast. I'm trying to, now that I have the ability, record some gameplay. And it's not going to be, I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to stream and, and record uh, the flavor of the month of games. That's not me. I'm not going to play Call of Duties. I'm not going to play Fortnite. I'm not going to play Minecraft. I'm going to play games that mean something to me. Uh, I am going to try and do more uh, first runs. I don't do, I haven't done a lot of that. I did a premiere where I first did uh, Spider-Man. I uh, first and, and that was my first foray, and that was my first experiment, and I wasn't comfortable. If you watch that, I'm sitting there like this going, with my mouth open, going, wow. And that's all I can say. I'm like, this is amazing. This is awesome. And uh, but, you know, I want to do more of that. I, I did it with Red Dead, and it was cool. And uh, I... Right now, my plan is to do it for FF7 Remake, for Final Fantasy VII. And that game means so much to me that for the remake, I want to I wanna capture that. Mike said he wants to do it too, but, I mean, who ca- I, I want to do it as well. I want to capture that. When I'm alone and I want to play it. And and that's the only other thing is that it's, it's hard to always do that with brand new games because I want to sit back and relax and play it. And sometimes, like, the only ways that I can game more often is if I game in the living room. I'm where I can kind of be around the family. I'm accessible, you know. I'm not. Man, I just realized I got sun spot on me. I got sun coming through here. I need to close that that blind. But anyway, on we have one last video. Now this video is a long one. It's like a half hour, guys. But this is the last one. The last one we ever filmed. Technically, I filmed one other pickup video after this. But I also forgot a whole stack of games and didn't realize it till I was already done, had put everything up, you know, put everything in alphabetical order and put it all neat up on my shelves over here and on the shelves over here that you can't see. And I realized it. I'm like, no, I already filmed it. And I'm like, well, maybe I could just do another one. But I'm like, no. I'm done for big batches, kind of. I mean, I did get some, you know, some games uh, this year uh, when our local store was supposedly going to be going out of business, and thankfully they didn't. They were allowed to stay in their location. It wasn't the fact that they were losing money. It was the fact that they had an issue with their landlord. Uh, You know how you have, like, plazas and stuff like that, and people who own that, they want to charge a certain amount of rent. They were able to come to an agreement, and there they get to stay and on such short notice it was impossible for them to find a good spot uh in town but we got to stay they're still around and i got some games on discount so cool you know so so some of those ones that i was just waiting on and i I, I was was looking to see if i could easily access some of the ones that i bought i think i put them all up it don't matter none, none of them are like awesome crazy great games they're just games that i've just been have waited so long Ones that I'm like, I need to pick that up. I need to pick this up. I need to pick that up. And I was able to get them all on discount. Without delay. I'm going to shoot it on over to the last pickup video. And this is spring and summer 2016. This is one of my biggest retro gaming pickups ever. And uh, it was a good note to go out on as far as you know, you know, pickup videos. Mike joins me for this, and we actually recorded a podcast right after this. And I think the episode that we did was like, like Hot Box One X is like early on. Man, this is like 2016, right? This is before we got in our own feed. This is before uh, we started doing the podcast on a weekly basis. You know, this is early days. So enjoy, guys. Really, uh, really, really uh, is cool to go back and look at some of these and watch along with you guys. Some of these, you know, going back down memory lane, watching the whole East thing, remembering how I got that. It, it was a good time. But I'm going to shoot it on over to myself. Take it away, 
me. Hey guys, Brando here once again with another pickup, and I got a special guest. He's my co-host for the Game Addicts Podcast. This is Mike, and basically, I'm going to be going through my pickups, and he's been collecting too, so we're going to go through some of his as well, and uh, I'm going to let you start it off. Ooh. Well, I'm going to start mine off with a bang. Um, actually, I believe you were present for this mm -hmm. This one. Um, I found a Super Mario All-Stars with Super Mario World. Oh, hell yeah. And it was actually quite under priced was it yes it was uh, about twenty dollars under price at this free play you know what is like so those those little like 16-bit um remakes if you will of the mario games yeah. are awesome and plus oh, yeah, that also are. comes with lost levels yeah which is awesome. the original mario 2 um for me my first one now some of these i think i'm gonna put in another video i may have left it out but uh, i got the uh the, the uh, what was it uh, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, the two Zelda games for the uh, Game Boy Color, and I got the manual as well. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, his wife had the games, but she was missing one of them, and I want to say she was missing Seasons. So I was, I had, uh, you know, one game and two manuals. Well, uh, we finally went back to a store that had been closed down for a little while, and uh, they had this, and I picked that up, and uh, I now, now com completes that set and uh, and along there the other thing I bought there was just a really cheap copy of uh, of Steel Diver which is like it was like a dollar seventy nine yeah it was cheap. super cheap really underrated game for the 3ds this is one of those it's like you, you use your fucking uh, you know gyroscope for like uh, or for like the little uh, what's that thing called is that a gyroscope for what what do we do like a submarine a little thing you the you oh the um... You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the, it's a par uh, I know what you're talking Periscope. about. Periscope. Periscope, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you use that for like, the, and it's a really neat little game. And for, like, it's so cheap right now. So it's like, why not, man? It's going to be worth quite a bit. It might be. You know what? It, it might be. It may, it may not be. The fact is it's, that it's a fun game and, it, like, literally no one really wants it. All right, so I'm going to roll into Super Mario RPG. That just, I, I'm, if you don't. I've never played this. You should definitely pick it up. This is a phenomenal game. It was a Square Enix basically did a Super Mario RPG. It was fantastic. Unfortunately, I must change the battery in this because oh. it lost my save oh, no. all the way to the last one. At I was least, at you, the last at least you know, you know it's not very hard to open them up. And right, that. yes. Um. And I'm going to go ahead and jump into our little Zelda. Uh, we went to this replay after work. And I said, I don't care how much it is. If they have Link to the Past, I'm buying it. Fully expecting to not find it because I hadn't found it in forever. They had it for 20 bucks. So that's pretty cool. Yes. Oh, yeah. And uh, if anybody's wondering during this video, it, it is really hot in the game room. There's no <laughs> AC back here. So if you see us like wipe our forehead, our brow, we turn the fan off just to do this video just for you guys. Now, you know what? I want to say that you, you mentioned how Nintendo partnered with Square for for Mario R R RPG. Yes. I want to say that they partnered with somebody for the Oracle games as well. Uh, don't quote me on it, but I think it was Capcom. I don't know for sure. Um, I, I know it was at least something on the Game Boy that they partnered with Capcom on. The next one on my list, uh, <laughs> on the last video I showcased uh, the East games, and I did pick up the third one that I was missing that has the missing little, has the little linking picture in there. So when you put them all side by side, they make a neat little picture, just like some of the old school VHS tapes. Yes. So I got a story about this because I ordered this on Amazon. I found it for $30 in good condition. No pictures, so it's a crapshoot. You're rolling the dice. You got so lucky. I did, well, and, and I messed with you too. I know you did. Because what I did was I simply, uh, I sent him a message saying, hey, I ordered it like this for $30 in good condition. I, it's not in good condition. And you go, uh oh, what's wrong with it? And I said, nothing. It's brand new. Everything is still sealed inside. <laughs> oh man, sealed. Thirty dollars. Uh, everything in here was sealed. Of course, I opened the game because that's how I am. If I'm gonna play it, it's gonna be open. Uh, if I do come across like something like Stadium Event sealed, I'm not gonna open that crap. Come on. Not. Yeah. If, if it's worth more than my ass, <laughs> it's staying sealed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm really excited to have that and add that to the collection. All right. So I picked up some stuff uh, randomly the other day. A lot, actually. Because this replay, somebody turned in a PlayStation. So I was looking through and I actually needed to get my 12 because I needed, you know, the two free. I was at mm -hmm. the cusp. So I went ahead and obviously picked up Metal Gear Solid. That's a no brainer, fantastic game. 
I've always wanted to try this. Uh, <laughs> when I was <laughs> when I was growing up, they had it was on the demo disc, mm -hmm. and I wanted to try it, and I never got the game because I could never find it. So I actually found it. It's a very um, it's a mix. There's good and bad in that. I figured, but eh, you know, um, it's an old PlayStation yeah. game. Yeah. And then um, Jet Moto Two. Oh hell yeah! I'll have all of them eventually. It's a good game. Then I found both the drivers in good condition. So I Dude, think those both. Those up. first two driver games really set the course for yes, like did. open world driving games we're gonna be going. Yep. I mean, there would not have been a Grand Theft Auto 3. If it wasn't for those. If it wasn't oh, for Driver, in my opinion. Uh go and then Driver 2 is the first one of the first games where you're actually able to walk around the car and actually see the silhouette of your character. Right, yeah. And I mean, like the up top view mm -hmm. of, um, of, of Grand Theft Auto at that too. time, yeah. Because in Driver 1 you can't get out of your car. Right. Until you can. For me, uh, I did pick up the Next two resistance games, uh, pretty cheap right now. If you're really, if you want to get into a good exclusive, all the resistance games are made by, you know, published by Sony uh, and Insomniac. Uh, really cool games to get. First person shooters. Uh, for some reason, Resistance 3 is move compatible. They were, they're, they just released the move, so they're like trying to make it like, you know, hey, we, if you bought a move, you play yeah, this game on here, you know. That. Uh, you know what? I, I got a move. Uh, so do I. I haven't even, <laughs> I, I've never even really messed with it, but. Uh, really cheap. I think this one was like, you know, like four bucks, and this one was like two fifty. Yeah, you can't um, eat that. So I mean, really good deal there. All right, seven and two. Now, as a kid, I was demo disc, um, as you know, mm -hmm. growing up. PlayStation always had tons of demo discs. You could pick them up from next to nothing. So I would pick them up. That's what I gamed on for a long time before I was able to. Other than I bought Jet Moto day one. Uh, the Armor Core. I loved that game, and I never got to actually purchase it. So I have been on a very big hunt for all of them, no matter what. All I've been able to come across is Armor Core 2, which is actually really hard to play. With the new generation of controller, it's like, oh my god. And then You'll find that a lot of older games are really difficult to go back to after, you know, we've are. been spoiled with how much they've really gotten like really, you know, yes. 3D games down now. And then, um, so I looked up on um, the the gaming price guide, mm -hmm. that the app, really good app, um, and I was looking up other Armored Core games because I knew that there were a few there. I didn't know there was that many. <laughs> so <laughs> I found, uh, the first time I've ever seen it, Armored Core 5, I found it and picked it up for a couple of bucks. It wasn't that bad. And then uh, Armor. Core 5 Verdict Day, and I, I really don't know if it's like a continuation of this or not. Maybe I like an expansion or DLC I, or something? I'm thinking that it's basically this with an expansion on it. Well, see, one thing that's interesting to know is that, I mean, I don't know if, if this one was, it doesn't look like it, but this one, our uh, Verdict Day, was made by From Software. Yeah. And they're the guys that, of course, now, they're more popular now for making the, uh, like the Demon Souls games or, yep. or Dark Souls games. Yeah. Really cool little hidden gem here. <laughs> the original Xbox Cell Damage. Uh, this is like a twisted metal game, but it's more cartoony. It's it's wacky and ridiculous. It's like like Animaniacs meets, it meets twisted metal. Yeah, pretty much because it, this isn't like Warner Brothers or anything like that. There's no actual like major characters that you know of. Right. But it, it is just some completely completely wacky. Made by EA of, of all people. Yeah. Um, but I just, man, I had to get it, and uh, I'm on a big thing of, like, I want to kind of, like, get more of the original Xbox, other than just the... Exclusives. Exclusives, because, see, like, a lot of people, they will go all third-party stuff Xbox, because it was better. And I'm like, yeah, I got the PS2 and the GameCube. Sometimes, for me, it's wherever I find it. Yeah. You know, like, I think, uh, you know, one game I thought about getting for the Xbox was, like, Freedom Fighters, but I, I always had it for the GameCube, so I'm like, I'm just going to play it. A lot of it is our area. I mean, it, a lot, yeah, yeah. our area does not carry that much of the GameCube as we both know because mm -hmm. we're both hunting GameCube. Or Dreamcast. Or Dream yeah, Dreamcast. <laughs> Alright, so good luck with collecting Dreamcast in our area. So um, Dishonored, I actually picked this up because of E3. Is it I saw the new one? The new one and I was like, holy crap, I have to play this game. It looks fantastic. I have only done a you know your 30 minute test to make sure the game works. I haven't dived into it because I've been really stuck on Final Fantasy Explorers still. No. Oh. But it, it looks like a great game. It's by Bethesda. You know it's going to be great quality. Bethesda always sends out great quality. So next for me, 
uh, these were sort of done kind of in a little bit of a bunch, so I'm gonna cover all, all of them here. First of all, uh, Yoshi's Island, Super Mario World 2. I, for some reason, I just kept passing on it. I mean, it was one of those things where it's like around $20 mark. I need it. I want it. There's a lot of games in that category. Donkey Kong Country was like that for me for a while because even though I love the game, I played it a lot when I was a kid though. So it was like, I, there wasn't a really big drive. I must get Donkey Kong Country. It was like, whenever I find it yeah. and I have nothing else to buy, I'll buy it. That's sort of the way this was. And then... At our local Disc Replay, they keep a bin of hidden uh, Game Boy games. because they we're put, like the only ones that get into it. Nobody else does but us. They'll put so many out, and then they will, well, uh, when those sell off, they'll put more out. Right. Uh, Kirby's Dream Land 2. Had to pick this up because there was one day, I tell you what, I was out game hunting. And I, I game hunted over a course of three days. I've never done that before. So hmm. I went to the same stores multiple times. Right. I didn't know what I wanted. I was sort of scouting. Like, oh, if I find anything else, back, else I'll come back for it. Multiple games, dude. I went to, uh, for Metroid Prime 2 mm -hmm. uh, on the GameCube. Went to go buy it. Open it up. It's empty. Oh, ah, whatever. I hate that. So then I go to another store. They had this. It's gone. Mm -hmm. So I got it. It, it, you know, it's actually a little bit of ate up, too. It's, it's got some character to it. No real <laughs> yeah. label damage other than like in the corner, but... You know, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm just happy to finally have it. And then for the 64, Paper Mario. The back label is pretty, pretty nasty. Bad. But you know what? It is the front that counts for me. Yes. Uh, you know, as long as this looks nice, I'm cool with it. Yeah, I'm really running out of big, major N64 games to buy. So I'm really happy to have finally crossed this off my I list. need to pick up an N64 before that game. This replay now has a lot of games I want. Mm. I don't have a system to play them on. <clears throat> and I'm a big believer in it don't own the system you don't buy the game i need to back out of that and just start well when you, when you when you know somebody who has already has all the systems you want to make sure they work right like, like hey i got the 64 game make sure it works okay so i have a couple here the kotars now as being a gamer i never own these yes i've never played them i only know the stories i hear they're probably the greatest one of the greatest Star the first Wars games. one the first one is definitely one of the greatest the second one lacks a little bit be right because of they ran out of like ran, they ran out of time to make it the first one's made by bioware the second one's made by obsidian yeah, simply yeah. because bioware's like we don't want to make the same game again so they went off to do jade empire and then they got it uh still eluding me jade empire is oh that one time we found it for so cheap and it was empty yeah hey that store is kind of has a dude that metroid prime one was in a plastic case yeah, you had to, they you had to take up and they unlock it. It was empty. Yeah, they don't even check them. But so I was uh, back where I grew up in Bloomington, and I was going to an antique store with my mother. That's what she likes to do. And I found a series slash games that I have been really hunting, and I've never found. That's Dot Hack Sign. If you know an anime, I'm a big anime person, so. But the thing with these dot hack sign games is they all come with a DVD. You can only get the DVD, from my knowledge, in the game. So, and they're not cheap. I found it for $5. And I flipped out. The second I saw it, I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Here we go. <laughs> That's the first one I picked up. Hopefully many more. But our location does not have very many of them. Mm, no. So I have never seen these on the shelves. I've never even seen the anime series on the shelves anywhere. Uh, you know what? I see those every once in a blue moon. Um, they're not very common. Uh, I, I've actually seen more of them up north. Go uh, figure. We need to make a trip of that. We do. Now, this next one I bought, eh, more new release, the HD Twilight Princess bundle with the Amiibo. Uh, you bought this too. Yes, I did. You actually played through it because I haven't yet. Uh, it's one of my favorite Zelda games. I absolutely love it. I mean, of course, I played the game uh, uh, on the Wii. That's where I played it. Uh, I'm, I, that's the one I don't own now because I sold a lot of my stuff. I bought the GameCube version and I I, I got this one. Uh, I didn't even put it in the same word because I knew it was brand new. Oh, yeah. No, but of course, I did open it and I had to you know, check out the Amiibo inside. Amiibo looks fantastic. Um, now, there is there content you can only access with the Amiibo? You have to open the Amiibo to use the content. That's why my Amiibo has not been opened. I don't care. It's maybe, just an extra dungeon. M maybe if I'm, I'm ever out and there's like a loose one. I might just go ahead and buy it. Yeah, yeah. And then what we can do is we can uh, ooh, switch. Ooh, hazy. We could switch them back and forth. Because I'd like to see what the new content is. But really, I don't care. I love the game. 
That's all it is. I don't want to open the amiibo. See, that's the thing is that like a lot of people are just like rip open. I don't care. Me, no. I'm just like man. You know what? I'm not a big amiibo collector, so I want the ones I want, and I want to just hang them up and have them as showpieces. They're really cool figures. I'm I'm an amiibo collector, so <laughs> I'm not gonna <laughs> open any of them. All right, so moving to okay, so I got uh, God of War: Chains of Olympus. It's a fantastic game. One of the reasons why I bought this is inside, <laughs> and I chuckled when I saw it is the actual promotional poster for PS3. I love little stuff. I like love that. these little these little knickknacks that you find in here when people keep the whole thing. It makes it, you know, it brings you back to when you first open it. Because I got this game with my PSP with uh, National Treasury when I bought my PSP 2000. And I, I had to have this. Like, I'm still hunting the National Treasury when I find it, I'll buy it. The actual UMD? Yeah, just because... Now, now, um, when I bought, I think it was an, a, like an Xbox game. I think it was Crimson Skies, it was one of, one, the one with the uh, Microsoft yeah. store. That had like the free Xbox Live insert and all that stuff. Yeah, I love that. And then um, Dragon Ears Aria. Yeah, I said it right this time. Yeah. <laughs> we said it on the podcast and I, I murdered it. But it is, it's actually really fun. I've actually got about an hour and a half in it and it's, um, it's kind of open world. Uh, run around up, like kind of back top view is kind of hard to explain mm -hmm. but you run around and then you you fight right there on the spot it's really fun i actually am looking forward to getting time to sit down and play through it because it looks like it's a lot of fun actually uh go amazon you made me buy this by saying say since you bought X all these <laughs> other games what about this one well good for you tell you what man amazon is pretty amazon's evil. the best amazon's now the best. i'm a big ps1 collector as anybody else knows so if i ever find a ps1 game i don't have I jump on that crap. Yep. Uh, Blasto, I, this was on my demo disc. I have a personal goal. The demo disc that came with my system and all the playable games on it, I must own the copy because I played all of them to death. Because I had two games. The wrestling game I got with, like, with it when I got the PlayStation and then the demo disc. Blasto was on there. Now Phil Hartman voiced Blasto. <laughs> it is a fun 3D, stupid ass adventure. It was really cool to find this. They actually had two of them when I went to go buy it. Yes, I remember. Uh, and unfortunately, more more recently, I was gonna buy uh, Oddworld, Abe's Exodus, and it's and it was gone when I went back. I saw that. That's it, a good. That'd be a good. Uh, but so unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to get that. But. So for mine, I'm gonna go ahead and put all my Vita games together because I bought these all at separate times, but it, they're just they're Vita. They're small. Sword Art Online, Lost Song. I'm a big anime fan. I love Sword Art Online. Pick this up for the story. Unfortunate that is not English translated, but I really don't care. It's it's a good game. It's you can read it. Really you can read it. It's really good. It's a, actually an extension of the story. It's a completely new story. It, it's that's, really see, good. that's cool. I like it when they. That's do that. what I like. And then um, Persona Four. I wonder who told me to get that. Oh, dude, great, great I, game. I'm a Final Fantasy guy. I love the JRPGs. I love the style. I love the artwork. So this was a good pickup. I actually got to the first rain <laughs> and stopped and, and then freedom wars i actually played through about 70 percent of this game it is very fun it is open world it would be a lot funner if we could we have link up and play mm -hmm. sure but it's it's really good it's uh it's a japanese rpg uh, i don't know what else to explain to you it's very quirky it's um basically your prisoners and you're trying to work off your million year sentence i went up north and uh, hung out with uh, Journey in the Comics co-host Nate, and we go game hunting usually when I go up there. Right. And for the first time, they didn't have much that I actually wanted. I, I should say that they didn't have much that I wanted. I was gonna say they the did pictures have, you sent me. I was. They did have. Bad. They do have a lot of stuff. Okay. But when you're getting to a point when you're trying to be selective about, okay, I already got this, already got this, already got this, already got this. What do I get? Right. So they have about eight copies of. Jean d'Arc or Joan of Arc, Joan of Arc, which is a sort of a it's a tactical RPG. So I picked it up finally. I'm like, they got so many copies of it. I'm just going to grab one. Now I got <laughs> I got Grandia for the That's... PS1. I mentioned I'm a big PS1 guy. This one was on a different demo disc. Uh, if you remember, the official US PlayStation magazine used to come with a demo disc yes. every month. That's where I got. That's where mine. I played. Yeah, that's where I played Grandia for the first time. And of course, I picked up Grandia too. A long time ago for the Dreamcast, so I definitely wanted to have the first one to go with it. Right. And then my last actual game is um, the game that I've been addicted to for quite some time, Final Fantasy Explorers. Um, it's a new release. I really look forward to it. It's basically a mix. It's Monster Hunter Final Fantasy. 
Mm -hmm. That's the best way to put it. You can um, get summons, you can harvest them. It, it's really fun. It, it's really fun. I, I actually like it a lot. And it is, you can actually um, create um, uniforms to be Cloud or uh, Lightning. Or, barks. Uh, Did you say you barks? got Barks? I got Barks. And then you can also be, um, wow, you're going to hit me for this one. <laughs> Eight. Squall. Squall. And he get his. I actually made his gun blade just because it's really cool looking. So badass. Um, this next one, I got two here. I don't think I bought these together, but for the 360, I got Far Cry Instincts Predator, which is basically, it is the, uh, it is an HD. Let's use that term. This was one of the first ports of like how they're doing now, when they said we're bringing an older game and putting it on a newer system with like newer graphics. They did this with Far Cry Instincts, but the Predator one is the expansion. It is. So this is the first one in the expansion together, both of them, for the 360. And it's a good game. It is. It I is, own the original. It is a good game. I, and I, finding that for the 360 for very cheap, that was awesome, because I was just going to get them on the Xbox and that be done with it. But I have the original on the Xbox, now I have that, so I have the two in one. Right. Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door. I remember when you found that one. Now, I bought this for my local disc replay. And normally this game goes for about 40 bucks, and they had it for 20. So, all right. Actually, let, let, let's just say this, it was marked 40. So, all right. you know what? There are times when you overpay for stuff, but just because you want to get it out of the way, yep. it's how often you come across it. In our area, retro gaming, we have a lot of stores, but man, sometimes you just run into the same games. Sports, sports a lot of sports. Sports, sports Shooters, you know. <laughs> There are times when you'll get lucky. Mm -hmm. now, I've seen this around before, but I've only seen it a couple times since I've been collecting, so I decided to get it. Especially a GameCube game. As our GameCube games are very limited here. Uh, the big GameCube games. Yes. You'll find a lot of your trash, or I, I, I don't want to call it trash, but your third party, nobody really cares about games. Yep. Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Great game, Great game but, but I mean... It's, you can get it on any other system. Yeah, exactly. So. Stuff like that. And uh, for this, it, it is a bestseller for people who just cannot stand the look at this i don't care it's gotten to a it's point a great game. you know at first when i first started collecting ps1 games i passed up games because they were because they were green lid not me they're there i'm buying them now so see the thing is now i don't care right <laughs> it got to a point where i'm like i started doing that i started being like an elitist and then i'm like and eh, no more so player's choice didn't bug me so our camera turned off yeah <laughs> I don't know what happened with that. So if you see a shift, it's because of that. Anyway, continue on my story. I go up there and I pick this up, 40 bucks. Lay it down, he scans it, 20 bucks. Boom! There it is, man, $20 game. Awesome, I am happy. Get it home, it starts booting up to the first opening cinematic, error. Error message I've never seen before. Right. Bring it to your house, try it out on your system. Error. Same error. So I bring it back in and I'm like, you guys probably don't have another copy. They did. Yeah. No case, but they had a copy, and I let they let me keep uh, this case. I don't know. I don't know if the uh, disc is supposed to look different for the for the one systems or yeah, for the uh, player choice. Either. But hey, man, you can't beat that. No. All right. So jumping into the systems here, we're gonna jump into my 3DS. Now, actually, I have a grip that I purchased that I absolutely love, but. I had a original 3DS, mm -hmm. and um, I just it was time to upgrade, and I had a 20% off coupon. Well, see, uh, I actually went in around Christmas and upgraded mine because yep. I got $100 for Christmas. Uh, traded those in, if that was like what $75 trade-in value, something like that. Yeah. So that mixed with that was pretty much my new console, and I told you about it, and you're like, ah, I don't know, I don't really know a reason to do it, and I'm like, dude, you got to. You'll, you might even use the 3D on it. I mean, it's a little bit better. Yeah, and, I, I, I enjoy it. It's it's really good, it's a better system. I mean. And then when you do get games, like the Kingdom Hearts games, or whatever, right. that do really use the C-Stick for, uh, for the other analog stick, right? it's built right in, so you don't have to worry about tracking down a circle pad that fits your 3DS, because they have one for the smaller, one for right. the bigger. And you can order those on, on Nintendo, but I've seen them go out of stock and then not have them back in stock for a long time. Right, it's just like this uh, This case is actually from Japan. It is, uh, I've never seen it here before. But the feature that I didn't know, I am, I gotta have something for my hands. I, I can't hold these little, I have fairly large hands and I can't hold them for a long period of time. So I have to buy a grip for everyone. You'll see them on my consoles. But 
it came with a little surprise. It actually comes with a um, holder for your games. That's cool. I had no idea. It, it was really neat, and I think it doubles as like a stand if you really need to, but no For people that. who really, really want to watch Netflix, right, YouTube right. on their 3DS. Ooh. But it was a good pickup. It was a, um, I really actually was not wanting to part with my 3DS. I really like my 3DS. And I rolled it around for about a week. And I finally broke down and we went and got it. Yeah, I was there when you picked that up. Yep. Now, just two months ago now, Uncharted 4 came out. So I wanted to replay the original three. And I figured, why not pick up the PS4 version? Right. With the slightly bit, little bit shinier graphics. Now, that's not a reason to pick it up. If you already own the other ones, they are just fine. But one thing that, that this does, that it actually changes the shoot button from the R1, which is the old school PlayStation shoot button, right. to the trigger. So now, the controls are very similar, except for the reload button and throwing grenade button. They swap those around for four. So if you play four and go back to one, you're going to be throwing some grenades when you're trying to reload your gun. <laughs> Just yeah. saying. Uh, but uh, great games. Absolutely great games. This one took me by surprise by how good it was. And maybe it's only as good because you played through all of these first. On its own, it's still good, but there's a lot of like uh, character character development that's done because of what happened with the other games. Right. So definitely, man, uh, there isn't a bad game in the bunch. The first one is probably the worst one, but that's because it was the first one. Yep. All right, going into the Vita. I did purchase a Vita. Um, you actually talked me into it. Mm -hmm. It's a good system. I actually enjoy it. It is the most underrated handheld. Yeah, I, I actually yeah, now I'm deferring my games from instead of getting the PS4 games that are coming out. Like the re, a lot of the remakes are coming out. Like um, I actually still got uh, Final Fantasy X and X2 mm -hmm. or yeah X2 because I, I didn't have one of these yet. I kind of wish I would have got it for this. I'm I like having my RPGs portable. Me too. I mean I, that's. I think that's all RPGers really. They like being able to, hey, I got a, like 10 minutes to grind because they're very grindy. I love it. It's actually um, Don't Starve, or me and my little lady are big Don't Starve fans. Um, I probably have more hours in Don't Starve than I do in any other game that I own, other than Seven. But it's a great system. If you don't have one, I highly recommend picking one up because you can still play your PS1 classics on here. You can, a lot of the new um, games that are coming out on PS4, like your uh, indie games, mm -hmm. are able, now you can, if you purchase them on your PS4 or your Vita, you get the other one. You get the other one. Yep. So it's a great thing to have. I, I love the system, and as you can see, I have a, another lovely case that actually doubles my battery life. It's really good. I like it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got some Wii stuff uh, to talk about here. Now, the first one, I got Pikmin 3, the original copy. Uh, the new one that came out that is the player's choice was $20 finally lowered the original price the use price down enough because I remember that we were actually on an episode of the Game Addicts was it Game Addicts or was it before Game Addicts I, I think, think it was, was Journey I think it, think for anybody that is just watching this there, we, have, we have podcasts here on the channel and of course uh, before we would talk about game stuff on just Journey to Comics but we've splintered off well we talked about some of the more expensive games out there and this used was going for like 60 70 bucks. 70 bucks. Brand new, it was even higher. I got this for 15 bucks. I got mine for 20 brand new. Well, yours was the yeah. brand new re-release. Re um, no, 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 no. Mine was the original. I got the original. And it was in the original packaging. Really? I'm pretty sure. I might have I might have the other one. I'll have to double check. Uh, well, I got another Wii game, No More Heroes. Uh, this is a really cool kind of beat-em-up game. Uh, I've heard the second one's a lot deeper, so I'm really looking forward to getting that one as well. Pretty cheap, though. And this one, I believe both games end up coming to the uh, PS3 because of the move. Yeah. Um, now, these next two, you were kind of jealous of. The, uh, this one, I, I owned one of these. I have actually own all of the Tales of Symphonia. I actually have a copy. So, <laughs> Final Fantasy, Crystal Chronicles, Echoes of Time for the Wii, and Tales of Symphonia, uh, Dawn of the New World. Now That's the second one. But the Final Fantasy one, when you walked up to me and said, look what I found, I tried to rip it out of your hands. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Uh, of course, Tales of Symphonia is one of your favorite games of all yes. time. Uh, well, and I, I played it and I enjoyed it. I have not beaten it, but to find this on its own, it was pretty, you know, I think both of these were like 17 bucks for the both of them. Something like that. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, I was actually, that day, I was going to get that all Brawl game yeah. <laughs> until I found these. And uh, I was only going to spend 20 bucks that day. That's a much I mean, better pickup. Than uh, oh, yes, it was. And this game, the Final Fantasy game, is actually a Wii port of the DS version. Yep. 
which I didn't even know. I just kind of opened it up, and the screen was smaller and it had two screens. I'm like, something's going on here. I will pick up the DS version, but I was very jealous. Going into my lovely uh, Christmas scene. Yeah. <laughs> this is, and um, he actually found it for me. It was a funny story here. I had said, I'm buying a PSP today. You said, okay, I'll go to disc replay first. I had some stuff to do before. All I see is on my phone blowing up with, oh my God, they have the green one. Oh my God, they have the Metal Gear one. Mm -hmm. So I went and picked it up. And sad to say, and you can still, I don't have it. I haven't found it yet. I still haven't found Peace Walker for the PSP. You know, thankfully, Peace Walker isn't that hard of a game to find. It's not. And it's brand new, really, on Amazon. It's not that much. Like Seven, I think I bought it for 15 bucks. Yeah, it's, it's, not it, that it's the greatest hits version, but still. I don't, yeah, it doesn't matter. But, but that case you got for it was really cool because that was the first one you bought of the whole case series. Yes. And it, it, it isn't like a Monster Hunter. It is actually a Monster Hunter exclusive one. Um, I, they had a black one, but it, it kind of looks weird with the. the, the it reminds line. me of Christmas. It, it, it looks very like Christmas. PSP. It does, but all in all, it was the first grip that I got, and actually the next uh, grip that I purchased was the Nyko extended battery for the Vita. Now that was the day that the guy's like, "Oh, hey, we got some games in for that system too." Yes, and that's when me and you almost had a knockout drag out. Well, because that was the day <laughs> I got the, uh, the the two Ease games that yes. were in the last video. Now. I've got two more, so th hey, this is actually going to work out. I know. A co-worker of ours sent me a message says, hey, I got found this Game Gear pack with some games. Uh, any price, we just want to get rid of them. And so I offered him a price, or offered her a price, but it doesn't work. So I'm going to have to actually uh, doctor it up and uh, replace the capacitors. because big break. <laughs> it doesn't work, but it's in really good condition. It really is, and I was really happy. She just gave it to me because it didn't work. Right. And then I got six games with it. The games are long. Uh, well, and then... Some so, manuals? Yeah, yeah, I got a couple manuals for some of the games. Sonic the Hedgehog and Magical Puzzle Popples. And then this is a little promotional material for the Game Gear. I love those. And then, <laughs> so I said some of the games. So I, so I got Sonic. So there's there's Sonic. And then Columns. Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. Ooh. And then over here, the, the other ones, Magical Puzzle Popples. This one is a Japanese import of some sorts. So I don't know uh, if it was how it was got over that. here. I never heard of it either. So uh, Arch Rivals basketball game. And then the best one of all, World Class Leaderboard Golf. Woo! Best game ever. <laughs> <laughs> but that was just really cool of her to just, just to give that to me because uh, now it's going to be my next big uh, project is to get this thing working again. And you know what's funny is that they actually released a, uh, a TV tuner for this. Where huh. you can pick up Airwaves uh, TV. Wow. And it was in color like on your screen. That's pretty neat. It won't work now because they digitized everything. Right. But there, there's, there's actually an, an AV in. And you can jimmy it up to where you can play any console you own on this. As a, as a screen. The screen's terrible, but I watched a video on YouTube the other day of somebody playing his 360 on his Game Gear. That good, was really for, good for him. <laughs> Alright, so my next pickup, I actually picked this up yesterday. Uh, I own a PS2, and I told myself I will never buy a PS1. I have no need for one, unless I find the Slim. Well, I found the Slim while I was uh, shopping for wedding stuff. <laughs> so right there. I, I saw it and I was like, hmm. I wonder where you went to find wedding stuff that you found a PS1. I actually went to um, a large antique store to sell it here. It's mm -hmm. not really an antique store, it's a sell it here place. And, um, you know, they don't really have you. Sometimes you can find stuff. That mm -hmm. is, that's actually, like I said, that's where I found the uh, dot hack sign, which, it, you know, it should have been a $30 game, five bucks. You can find good deals in there because they just want to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So they had this up, and I saw it, and I instantly stopped, and I was like, okay, I'm looking through, making sure that it's fairly priced correctly, and it was, so I picked it up. And, and it works, so I tested it out last night. But an interesting thing about this is it actually is has a different mm -hmm. adapter. It does. And it, that's really weird because Sony really sticks to kind of the same adapter that they have for years and years. You know what? There's only a few consoles over the years that have had DVS. This one yep. and then the P the large fat PS3 had the big yep. 
almost like the PC style. Yeah, of the like, huge one. Yeah. So they usually always stick to the same style of plug, and I thought it was neat to have this. And you know, I don't need it, but it's it's really cool collection piece. I uh, know where I can get a TV. Oh yeah. But it's very expensive, so. I, I do want to get the TV just to have it and be like, I have the Slim with the Slim TV. See, I guess I actually got one of those and I bought that from Rob. Um, I've only used it a couple times because I like you. I've got a, I got the PS2 hooked up. Yep. So for my setup, it's a lot easier to have that. But it's really awesome because I think I have, I have the I have this and I have the, my original, original PS1. Oh I, wow! The old school one that my memory card slot stopped working. So I have to use the Game Shark memory cards <laughs> to even play anything on it. My last pickup, another coworker. We just started talking about games one day, and you know she goes, "Oh yeah, I play some games," and she's mostly on PC, you know, right. playing stuff. And she's like, and she's thinking about getting into consoles again. She, you know, and uh, we just start talking about games, and she start talking about some games she's playing in the past. She started telling me, "Oh, this awesome N64 game I had," and she started describing the game to me. I'm like, "That's not a 64 game, right? It isn't a 64 game." She goes, "You sure?" I'm positive because I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. And it's Demon's Crest for the Super Nintendo. That's good. A spin off of the uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghosts, uh, Ghosts and Goblins series. And there was uh, there's actually three of these games. Uh, I, one of them's on the Game Boy, and I think the other one might be on the Nintendo. I need to, I need to double check and figure out which ones, because I want to say this is the third one. But, awesome game. Uh, this one's got on more of the expensive side in more recent years. Uh, we got it. You know, we cut a deal. I got. It, I paid less for it, and she got more than if she would have taken it to a store for it. Funny thing about that, we've seen that two or three times. You know at what? Our lo local HQ, your gaming HQ now. It used to be Game Exchange. Yeah, yep. I saw it in there, going for a straight hundred dollars. So, uh, I, I will. I'm glad to say I did pay under a hundred. I'm very glad to say I did. But you know, she also got a pretty good deal on, like on the other like end of that. So, right. um, definitely excited to have this. Rob is extremely jealous. Yeah. He was over here yesterday. He's somewhere here, I think. He's always here, yeah. but uh, you know he's definitely uh, you know shaking his fist at me. He really wants this, so I may have to uh, try and find a way to get him a copy somehow. Just that you know, to, you know that way he can sleep at night. <laughs> and that's it. That's the last episode. Uh, yeah, so I did film one more, and it's gone. I, I think I just deleted it. I. They gave up on it, and I think I justified it by having it be like, well, you know what? The last one I did was a great game to go out on, and I I had Mike there, and we could just transition that into the podcast. I'm pretty sure I talked about all those games on the podcast as well. But that's it, guys. That's all I got. Me and Mike will be back at you next week to talk about all the cool stuff that came out of Gamescom. I just... While while this was playing, I saw the the gameplay trailer for that new Predator game coming out for the PlayStation. It looks kind of cool. Uh, I'm not an online guy, but it looks kind of cool. Until then, guys. Uh, yeah, check us out on all of our social medias. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Game Matters Play. Hit us up on there. Check out the podcast or on, on the podcast services I mentioned earlier. Check us out on live on Twitch. We're also on Mixer. We're on Facebook Live. We're on YouTube Now Live. Uh, we stream the live show uh, usually on Wednesdays. Uh, the schedule uh, should be going back to normal. We'll see. It's kind of up in the air. Uh, we will let you know. As soon as we have a definitive answer, we will let you guys know. Maybe on the next episode we'll be able to give you a good definitive answer about the schedule. Uh, but we're going to try and keep that uh, as constant as we can. And if it changes, we'll let you know. But guys, thank you guys so much. Again, from the bottom of my heart, for Mike, thank you guys for watching, listening, following along. It's always awesome to hear from you guys. Uh, don't be shy. Email us. Uh, shush, hit us up on the social medias. You know, comment along on the live stream. We had a, uh, a, an episode or two ago. We had, uh, you know, we had a guy follow, like, comment along and said that he's been watching ever since episode twenty, and he just wanted to say hey and that you know he loves the show. That's awesome to hear. That honestly, that that kind of like brought a a pause to my momentum as far as doing the show. I was like, oh, oh, right here in the feels. Guys, I've been Brando, and I'll see you next time here on the Game Matters Podcast. Have a good one, and game on.